So we finally see a developmentalist. And this developmentalist had each of us, like me and his dad, fill out a questionnaire, which we filled out like completely opposite. She spent her time with him. At the end of the day, she was just like, you know, you both filled out these questionnaires like completely opposite. It's hard for me to know what's what or what's really happening. And he just seems like quirky. I was like, as a physician, hearing this from a specialist, I was like, what the heck does that mean? My kid is quirky. Okay, so she just wanted us to continue occupational therapy. Oh, find him a therapist because she felt like the, the divorce was really affecting Aaron because at that time, everybody he met, he would be like, hi, my name is Aaron and my parents are divorced. He would say that to everybody. And I also made a video about that. And if you haven't seen that one, go back. And that's part of his social awkwardness. So get him a therapist, which that's hard to do for like a four-year-old to find a really good therapist. So we, we did try few did she also diagnose adhd and she diagnosed like anxiety at that time oh see the neurologist to rule out adhd also whatever so we do all of those things we see the neurologist the neurologist is like oh he has executive functioning disorder okay that's like all right he has you know issues with organizing and planning and attention um problems focus issues we get started on some supplements um we were giving him iron at that time the b complex and the dha we had to follow up with the neurologist in a few months we're like we're not really seeing much of an improvement with this the neurologist talks to us at that time about starting him on medication i'm like i don't know if i want to do that let's wait a year passes by the developmentalist leaves the practice it's a whole different developmentalist who sees him for the second time and now we're in the pandemic so it was a virtual visit so this woman had never met aaron and she's just looking back at the old notes and she's like oh i see that you know dr so-and-so said you know there's some quirky stuff about him she talks to him over the computer he's she doesn't change anything doesn't change any recommendations doesn't change any diagnosis doesn't really tell us anything except like follow up in a year that annoyed me a lot because I felt like she really didn't do her job and I can stand lazy doctors I can't stand that i cannot stand this right it's like oh you're just following whatever notes you just read and you're copying it i was like really struggling at that point because i knew it so at my next visit with the neurologist i was like aren't you suspicious that he has autism and he goes oh he definitely has autism and I was like, yeah, so why hasn't anybody made the diagnosis? So he's like, well, I'll diagnose him. But he was like, why do you want him? Why do you want me to diagnose him when he's so high functioning? And I'm like, excuse me, because he deserves the services that he's entitled to. He's doing great, but you know how much work I'm putting into this so that this kid could thrive? He deserves to get more services at school and stuff. And which at school, when he went now into elementary school, he was getting speech therapy and occupational therapy and you're probably asking me like why is he getting speech therapy he's getting speech therapy because he doesn't have the reciprocal conversation he has a lot of words good vocabulary he can memorize anything and spit it out to you that's called echolalia okay when they just memorize stuff and they say it like they watched a youtube video and they could say it word for word and spit it right back out to you that's echolalia they need to learn how to have a conversation they need to learn how to use those words and everything so that's a whole different thing speech therapy is good for that 